Good morning, church family. I just want to say thank you to Reverend Kate and the church leadership for the opportunity to speak and share a few things with you this morning. And also thank you, choir. You guys have been amazing this morning. You've really put me at ease. It's like you went through every single one of my favorite hymns <laughs> and put them down and you sang so beautifully. So thank you. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, this morning, even as you use me as a vessel. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to live together in unity. These are scripture verses that are a wonderful description of the anticipation and the delight that we experience when, as Christians, we come together as a community. It really doesn't matter whether it's in this church here or the one across the street, or even if it's a church on a totally different continent. We all have received an invitation, it's an open invitation, to Jesus' house. And we know that when we get there, it's going to be amazing. Like this morning. But have you ever imagined what your reaction would be if you were invited to Christ's actual home? You know, like the place he grew up in the place where he lived, he breathed, he ate his meals. Would you bring everybody in your life along, tell everybody on the way, you know, I'm going to Jesus' house? <laughs> or would you keep it to yourself? Don't answer that question just yet. Even though we live in a land that is far removed in time and space from Jesus' physical presence here on earth, Wherever we gather is, in actual fact, his home. It's all of us as individuals and as a community. The Bible actually does give us a glimpse into what it was like in Jesus' home during his ministry days. The Gospel of Mark tells us that once people heard Jesus was home, they flocked to him. They packed that house so much that there was no room, not even outside, for you to see or hear Jesus. But there was a small group of people that were so desperate to do that, that they climbed right onto the top of the house. They got onto the roof, and then they broke it down and lowered a paraplegic friend so that Jesus could see him and minister to him directly. I mean, it's an exciting story, and we often think about the miracle of healing that followed. But I wondered, why didn't the people outside, and you know, the people at the door, why didn't they make room? You see somebody in obvious distress, wouldn't you step aside? And it made me think even further. Am I doing that? Am I standing in the way of somebody who wants to come to Christ? Is my life a witness or is it a hindrance to the gospel? Do I welcome people seeking salvation or do I check to see if they have the right clothes, the right race, gender, criminal background? Nobody needs my approval to enter the house of God. I didn't issue that invitation, and neither did any of you. John 3.16 has no discriminatory bars whatsoever. The people came to Christ, and they were welcomed despite the disapproval of the religious leaders of the day. The paraplegic and his friends were so sure of 
and so desperate for the welcome of Christ that they broke the roof. Christians who leave the faith or switch denominations often cite church hurt as the reason for their departure. And I've come to realize that sometimes we, like the teachers of religion, who were also seated in Jesus's house, by the way, feel the need to gatekeep. We set up rules, traditions, and doctrine to help safeguard the faith, but then we also use those rules and traditions to wound our brethren, oops, sorry, to wound our brethren who fall short of expectations. This morning, Christ is reminding us of what's important. He came to heal the sick and the lost, and that healing he offers is both spiritual and physical. Most importantly, it's open to all of us. He said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a rest that heals, a rest that strengthens. It is a rest that makes whole. So, if we as Christians are the representatives of Christ here on earth, if we are his home, then we also need to offer that rest, that hospitality to all who come seeking the Lord. We all know the story of um, Sodom and Gomorrah and how Abraham bargained with the Lord as to saving Lot and his family. But have we thought about how he got that opportunity? Genesis 18 tells us that Abraham saw three strangers on a dusty road headed towards his camp, and he went out to greet them. He offered them rest. This simple act of hospitality and the proclamation of Isaac's imminent arrival. Sarah laughed, but that didn't change it. It put Abraham in God's confidence. He debated with God as to the lives to be saved. In our everyday interactions with our brothers and sisters in the church, or with the people we see daily in our neighborhoods, do we realize that we might be the only Bible that they might ever read? Are we exuding the hospitality of Christ that caused him to ignore the broken roof and fix the broken body? Are we putting ourselves and our resources at the disposal of strangers and neighbors alike? Or are we the reason for someone's dismissal of Christ and their departure from the church? Last year, when my family moved to Germantown, we had no definite plans to be here specifically. We were cautious about finding a church home, so we visited lots of different churches, pretty much all running along the same theological lines, offering the same social services and all. But for some reason, we just kept popping up here. We'll go somewhere else. Next Sunday, we'd be here, go somewhere else, come back here. It's because we saw that open invitation from Christ on display here in the lives of you all. We weren't the only ones who looked like us or thought like us, dressed like us, talked like us. You all spoke to us so warmly, so openly, you didn't treat us like we were curious objects. We were people. And when we were hesitant, you reached out with healing hands and you made us feel welcome in a way that went beyond the superficial. Yeah, it's nice to go to a church and receive a fancy welcome basket. But I agree with Rosaria Butterfield. She wrote a book called The Gospel Comes with a House Key, 
practicing radically ordinary hospitality in our post-Christian world. This is what she said. The purpose of radically ordinary hospitality is to build, focus, deepen, and strengthen the family of God, pointing others to the Bible-believing local church and being earthly and spiritually good to everyone we know. So, knowing this today, I choose to be hospitable in my thoughts, my words, and my actions towards all that I meet so that they might draw closer to Christ. Today, I am choosing to be hospitable wherever I find myself, especially here in God's house, so that the love of Christ may flow through me and heal the hurts and sorrows of each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I'm asking you to join me on this journey of healing hospitality. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love poured out. We pray that you guide our doors to open, guide our hearts to welcome, and guide our hands to receive. In Jesus' name, amen.